Hey everyone, so welcome to my course on ordinary differential equation. So today we are only going to see examples on system of first order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. So in my previous lecture, I only talk about the theory part. So if you have missed my that lecture, my strong recommendation or suggestion will be you please first see that lecture. The link I will be posting in the description, but please go through that lecture first. And today we are going to talk about the examples. So the examples I will be mainly concentrating will be on the system 2 cross 2 and the system 3 cross 3. That means the matrix which you get is of order 2 cross 2 and of order 3 cross 3. And in these two examples, I will be taking all the possible cases. That means what if your arithmetic multiplicity is not equal to geometric multiplicity, then how to find generalized eigenvectors. So all these things I will tell you. So first let's concentrate on our 2 cross 2 system. So this is the first example. If you can recall, this is the same example I took my previous lecture and there I directly gave you the solution and I told you to verify those solutions. Now here we will see how to find those solutions. Okay. So whenever you have a system, your first thing is you first write down that system in the matrix form. So here what to do is you write y prime is nothing but a into y. So what is my y prime? My y prime is nothing but y1 prime y2 prime is equal to a. What is my a? 0, 5, 5, 0 into y1, y2. So this is how you can write your system in the matrix form. Now you have the matrix A. Now we saw in our last lecture that if y is the solution of this differential equation, this system of differential equation, then your y is of the form x bar into e raised to lambda t. Where what is lambda? Lambda is the eigenvalue for this matrix A and x is the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda. So my ultimate job is we will first find what are the eigenvalues for the matrix A. Okay, now let's first find the eigenvalues. How do you find the eigenvalues? If you recall from linear algebra, if I want to find the eigenvalue, you simply solve the equation which you get after solving this determinant of A minus lambda I equal to zero. And if I put the value of A and I, what do we get? So A minus lambda into I, when you do the subtraction, this is what you have. And when you find the determinant, you have lambda square minus 25 equal to zero. This is called as the characteristic equation. And what are the roots? Plus minus phi. And the roots of the characteristic equation are nothing but the eigenvalues. Why this is used to find the eigenvalues? Well, the, if I tell you the logic, it will take a lot of time. But when I will record the lecture on linear algebra, I will definitely tell you the logic behind this. But okay, as if now we have to keep in mind that this is how you find eigenvalues. And once you, uh, you have eigenvalues, our next step is to find the eigenvectors. Now let's find the eigenvectors for lambda equal to phi and lambda equal to minus phi. So for lambda equal to phi, what do you do? You solve this system a minus phi i into v bar equal to zero bar. Actually, this is a minus lambda i. My lambda is phi, so I'm putting phi over here. Now, what do you get? If I do a minus phi i, what is my a? Zero, this you put lambda equal to phi. So what do I have is my, you put lambda equal to phi over here. So this is what I have. Now, if I do the row operation r2 plus r1, then my second row will become zero. So ultimately I have only the first row. So what do I have? I have phi y1 plus phi y2 equal to zero. So therefore v1 will be equal to v2. So if I put what is my v bar? It is v1 v2. So v1 v1 over here. If I take out v1 outside, I have 1 comma 1. So this is what the eigenvector is. This is the linearly independent eigenvector. All multiples of 1 comma 1 will be linearly dependent eigenvectors. So therefore, what is the first solution? If I write y1, my first solution, it is the eigenvector into e raised to lambda t. So if you can recall, this was the first solution. What was the first solution? e raised to phi t into e raised to phi t. So e raised to phi t, e raised to phi t. So you take y1 as e raised to phi t, you take y2 as e raised to phi t, you plug it into the system, it will satisfy both the differential equation. Now in the same scenario, if you do for lambda equal to minus phi, this will become plus, plus, plus. If I do r2 minus r1, again the second row will become zero. So I will have phi y1 plus phi y2 equal to zero. So my v2 will be minus v1 and therefore this will be minus v1. This is minus, this is minus, this is minus. Well, I have done very fast. If you are not comfortable, make sure you pause the video and you calculate the eigenvector for minus phi, depending upon your comfort level. So this, are, this is my second set of solution. e raised to minus phi t 
and second is minus e raised to minus phi t. So this is my y1 and y2. So I get two solutions. So what is my two solutions? 1 1 e raised to phi t and 1 minus 1 e raised to minus phi t. So these are my two solutions. Eigenvector e raised to eigenvalue into t. Eigenvector into e raised to eigenvalue into t. Okay. So or another way of writing is you take this inside. That means my y1 is this and my y2 is this. If you want to precisely say what are your y1 and y2, the solutions. So now question is, are they linearly independent? How do you check? So if you can recall the Vronskyian which we defined in our last lecture, what is the Vronskyian? It is nothing but e raised to lambda t, which is phi t into e raised to lambda 2t into here, there were the eigenvectors. So what are the eigenvectors? 1, 1, 1, minus 1. This is e raised to 0 t into minus 2. And this quantity is non-zero. And since the Vronskyian is non-zero, therefore y1 and y2 are what? They are linearly independent solutions to the given system. Well, Bronskian is one way to conclude they are linearly independent. If you can recall the theorem from linear algebra, eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are always linearly independent. So here you have 5 and minus 5 as the eigenvalues. They are distinct. Yes, they are distinct. So therefore, their corresponding eigenvectors has to be linearly independent. So even if you state that theorem, it is fine. Or if you don't remember that theorem, you simply find the Vronskyian which is non-zero, therefore they are independent and therefore by our theorem, any general solution to the given system is of the form C1 Y1 plus C2 Y2. So this is how your general solution looks like. You can write in this way or sometimes people ask you to explicitly state your small y1 and small y2. So what you can do over there is you can rewrite this as so what is my y? It is nothing but y1 y2. You multiply c1 inside and e raised to phi t inside here as well and then you add the vector. So my y1 is nothing but c1 e raised to phi t plus c2 e raised to minus phi t and my y2 is c1 e raised to phi t minus c2 e raised to minus phi t. So you have to take your y1 and y2 such that they has to be in this form linear combination of e raised to phi t and e raised to minus phi t then only it will be the solution of that system so these are all the possible solution or the general solution to the given system so now i have solved this in very detail from next example onwards i will only state the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors it will be your job to verify them okay depending upon your comfort level you can find eigenvalues and eigenvectors Okay, now let's go for the next example where the eigenvalues are same. Then let's see what can be the possible cases. Okay, take this as your second example. So y prime is, it's a 2 cross 2 matrix, 1, 2, 0, 1 into y. So this is my matrix. What are the eigenvalues? Well, you can either go by determinant of a minus lambda i equal to 0 or you can observe that this is an upper triangular matrix and for upper triangular or lower triangular or diagonal matrix, your eigenvalues are always the diagonal entries. So here 1 comma 1 are the eigenvalues. Now what is the next step? You find the eigenvalues for this eigenvector 1. So this is the system that you solve a minus lambda i into v bar equal to 0. Now if I substitute the values, what will I get? So from here, if I solve, I get v2 equal to 0 and therefore what is my v bar? My v bar will be nothing but 1 0 into v1. Okay, so this is what I have. And now you get only one eigenvector. So what is your one solution y1? It is nothing but 1 0 into e raised to lambda t. Lambda is 1. But now, so here what was your am? Am was 2. And what is your GM? The number of linearly independent eigenvectors. Geometric multiplicity. Your GM is 1. If you recall something, it's not a diagonalizable matrix. But anyways, okay. So here it was a 2 cross 2 system and we wanted 2 linearly independent solutions. But here what we are getting, we are getting only one solution because the eigenvalues are repeated. Question is, how do you find second linearly independent solution? Well, then something called as a Jordan canonical form and all those theory comes into picture. But okay, I won't go into detail. I will directly give you the formula on what is my second linearly independent solution. Because my ultimate aim for this lecture is you should be able to solve the examples. This maybe sometimes later I will record a lecture on why this is coming as your y2. But the formula for y2 is it is nothing but since 1 and 1 is repeating and you are getting only one linearly independent eigenvector. Question is how to find another linearly independent vector. So answer is this is how your y2 looks like. You multiply your previous solution by t 
and you add u bar into e raised to lambda t lambda is 1 so i'm writing e raised to t only and now what is my u bar u bar is the vector it is called as the generalized eigen vector and it is obtained by solving this equation so i want to find u bar so i have u bar over here a minus lambda i equal to 0 we won't write 0 right because if i write 0 i get v bar only so what is the generalized eigen vector you equate it to the previous eigen vector so if my u is the generalized eigen vector i will equate this system to my previous eigen vector so here if i try to solve this what do i have what is a minus i it was nothing but 0 to 0 0 u bar is nothing but say u1 u2 and what is my v bar it is 1 comma 0 so this i have now if you try to solve this what you get so i get 2 times u2 equal to 1 and i don't get any condition on u1 so what so what i have i have u bar which is my u1 and what is my u2 u2 is nothing but 1 by 2 now i can separate this 1 0 times u1 plus 0 half okay so your u bar is nothing but it is of this form where u1 can be anything for simplicity let's take it as 0 because even if you don't take 0 when i take the general solution this term will go away so let me take this as 0 so what will be my u bar 0 1 by 2 so for simplicity i am taking u1 equal to 0 so what is my u bar 0 half so what will be my y2 the second linearly independent solution it is t into y1 which is 1 0 e raised to t plus what is u bar 0 half e raised to t so this is my one solution and this is my second solution to the given system and they are linearly independent no need to verify you can directly state them so therefore what will be the general solution it will be c1 y1 plus c2 y2 so that's how your general solution will look like so this was the scenario for a two cross two matrix where the eigenvalues are repeating and you are getting only one independent eigenvector suppose if you are getting two linearly independent eigenvectors then it was not a problem no need to go for this one Okay, so let me take an example. So this part will be more clear. So suppose this is my third system. This is my matrix A. It's a diagonal matrix. Therefore, what are your eigenvalues? Your eigenvalues are nothing but the diagonal entries. If you find the eigenvector, so what is your eigenvector? A minus 1 into i into v bar equal to 0 bar. So if you solve this, what do you get? 0, 0, 0, 0 into v1, v2 equal to 0, 0. That means there is no condition on v1, v2. So your v bar is nothing but v1, v2. This is nothing but 1, 0 into v1 plus 0, 1 into v2. That means what your eigenvector is nothing but it's a linear combination of 1, 0 and 0, 1. Are 1, 0 and 0, 1 in, in linearly independent? Yes, they are independent. E1 and E2, right? So therefore they are independent. So therefore what is the one set of solution? Your y1 is nothing but 1, 0 into e raised to t and your y2 is nothing but 0 1 e raised to t so these are your two linearly independent solutions and therefore your general solution will be c1 y1 plus c2 y2 so for two same eigenvalues if you are getting two linearly independent eigenvectors great your job is done no need to find generalized eigenvector but if for the same eigenvalues you are getting only one eigenvector then you need to go for the generalized eigenvector so for a two cross two matrix these are the three possibilities either you get two distinct eigenvalues great you will get two linearly independent eigenvectors if the eigenvalues are repeated then two cases either you will get two linearly independent eigenvectors great your job is done if you are getting only one eigenvector then you have to go for the generalized eigenvector and in that case what will be y2 it will be t times y1 plus u into e raised to lambda t which i just told you so this is how you take care of all two cross two possibilities